spirit, for what yes. was said and what was done. Amen. We thank God. We come together one more time just to praise him. Amen. And he allowed us to get up this morning yeah. and worship him Amen. in spirit yeah. and in truth. Amen. For all the times we could not see our way, you made a way and you told us to go on. When stumbling blocks were a problem for us, you Anybody that worked on the program last week, anybody that prayed that the uh, service be successful and be a blessing to somebody, yeah. anybody that had the mind to worship when they came into the door, yeah. they ought to hold up their hands right now and say, Lord, I'm so grateful. Yeah. So grateful.
Psalms 30, King James Version. I will exalt thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up, has not made me my foes to reject over me. O Lord, my God, I cry unto thee. Thou hast healed me, O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Yes. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Yes. For, in, for his anger endured but a moment. In his favor is life weeping may endure for a night. Yes. But joy cometh in the morning. Yes. Yes. And in my prosperity, yes. I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Yes. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. Yes. I cried to thee, O Lord, unto the Lord I made supplication. Yes. What profit is there in my blood wow. when I go down to the pit? Mm. Shall the dust, dust praise thee? Yes. Shall it declare thy truth? Well. Oh, hear, O oh Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thy my help. Thou hast turned for me my morning into dancing. Yes. Thou hast put off my sackcloth yes. and gird me with gladness. Yes. To the end that my glory may sing praises to thee yes. and not be silent. No. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Yes. This is the reading of the words. May you have a blessing unto you. Amen. thank you for your son Jesus we thank you for the Holy Spirit we thank you Father God for all of his sacrifices Father God even though Father God they did all matters of things to him Father God but he could not be defeated and we thank you Father God that he stayed on the cross now, Lord God, what we ask you this morning to lead us and guide us in our thoughts, our words, our actions. Increase our faith. Increase our understanding of your word. Increase our willingness to be obedient to your word, Father God. We thank you for how you speak to us, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you promised that you would never leave us alone. Lord God, we pray for mankind all over the world. We pray for all inhabitants of the world, Father God. We pray, O oh God, that you make the enemy leave us alone. Please, Lord God, you know all about it. Father God, you have the key where he dwell. So, Father God, you are in charge. Please, Lord, make him leave us alone. Lord God, your word tells us that you would never leave us, you would never forsake us. And Father God, we're so grateful for that. You are one, Father God, that never broke a promise. Father God, you can't fail, Lord God, and we're so grateful. Father God, we're so grateful that you allow us to have a relationship with you. Lord God, we just ask you to just Keep us as a church, Father God, the way that you would have us to be kept. Lord God, make the enemy leave us alone. Help us to understand, Father God, that the enemy is here to 
just cause disruption in any way that he can. So, Lord God, keep your hands on us. As we struggle, Father God, to try to make decisions, decisions that you have already made. It's already done, Father God. Help us to realize that it's already done. Father, we can't thank you enough. You're just so good to us. Lord, we pray for our Mount Area church family and their families, Father God. Lord God, we just lift up a prayer for Linda Francis and her sister Patty yes, yes. and the whole Francis family, Father God. We ask you, oh God, to keep your hands of mercy on them, Father God. Only you know what they stand in need of, Father God. Meet those who love Patty up close and personal, oh God. Give them the peace, Father God, that only you can give. Now, Lord God, we ask you to inhabit this service this morning, Father God. Lord God, we just we just can't thank you enough for being so good to us. Lord God, only you know, only you know, oh God, what our next storm will be. But we're so grateful, Father God, that you are with us in our now moments. And you are with us in our next moments, Father God. Because, Father God, you just promised that you would never leave us and you would never forsake us. So, Lord, I lift this prayer and I ask all things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
One of our 
out pastoral candidates by the name of Dr. Burl Whipple. Come out, show some love for someone who want to preach the word to the Mount Arrogant congregation. So come out and see what it's all about. Then on Sunday, April the 21st, we'll have another pastoral candidate by the name of Envy L. Miller Singer. Same thing, y'all. Come out, see what he got for us. Attention, ladies, I'm talking to you now. Women's Month. Women's Month, Women's Month. Women walking out of faith through the March of May. Come out, be a part of it. Our Women's Day is on May the 17th. 19. Come out, be a part of it, ladies. Y'all beautiful, and I know y'all got some beautiful days waiting for that day to come out. Come on out, be a part of God's word. Be a God part of God's service, and let's get excited. We know how to do it. The matter if women know how to do it. We calling y'all. Be a part of it. Remember our sick and shattered, especially set up in prayer. We all need prayer. Come on, send a flower, give a phone call. And if they want you to, go by and see them. Remember especially the names on our list because they know the power of prayer. So remember Deacon this Anna Barber. Remember Trustee Pearlie Carter. Remember Sister Doris Gordon. Remember Brother Deacon David Brain. Remember Deacon Lucille Johnson. Sister Annie Murphy. And Sister Ethel Stevenson. Remember them, and anyone else you know, if you look around, might be on that sick bed, just remember them. Remember our bereaved families, just send up a prayer for them. Let them put your arms around them, even if it's virtual. Let them know they are still loved, and even though they love us, it's with God and asking from us that the Mount Mary still cares. Anything else? will come from the pulpit, and again, welcome, 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 beautiful people. Amen. 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 be the boy for great things. Amen. Great things he has done. Thank you, Lord. I'm still excited. Amen. Will our chair, Deacon Willie C. Peterson, come to the front? Shortly, we should celebrate 
when he was born again. So we thank God for him. We ask right now that we um, just wish him a happy birthday on behalf of the church proper, which includes the ministerial staff, the, the joint board, and the members of the Mount Air Baptist Church. We wish our chairman a happy birthday.
Sunday, this Palm Sunday of 2024. Somebody give God a hand for the praise this morning. Somebody give God a hand for the praise this morning. For being a good God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray.
Jesus. Yeah. Well, I ain't going to be all day. Exactly. We can't preach it. See, because I ain't got but two points. Amen, somebody. We can't. I, I need you to realize that uh, each of the gospel writers tells of Jesus trying to entry into Jerusalem. But there's nothing in Matthew and Mark that helps us understand yes. why we pick Sunday. You got to go to John to find that out. Amen, somebody. Amen. Are you clear why we in John this morning? What are you saying, preacher? See, because in John chapter 12, beginning at the first verse, it tells us it was six days before the Passover. That's how we come as Christians to see Sunday. And understand that the day in which Jesus comes into Jerusalem, riding on that coat, the way Zechariah has described it hundreds of years in advance that the people couldn't miss it. That's in John. Am I making sense this morning? Yeah. I want y'all to fact check me. Go ahead and open your Bibles and look for yourself and see why. Because I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to look at God's word. And understand, because of six days before the Passover, the Bible said Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And why is it important that you understand that? Well, I'm glad that you asked the question that needs to be asked this morning. Y'all are some smart individuals. Amen, somebody. Y'all must have all been on the honor roll when y'all was in school. Amen. Why are you saying that? Because uh, here in John, he tells us this because you need to know that when Jesus got laughing up from the grave, everybody started talking. Who is this man that was able to raise Lazarus? Why is that important? Because I need you to understand that in that day and time, that the people believe that when a person died physically, that their body, their soul would hang around for a minute or two. But after three days, it was too late to do anything. But this particular occasion, when Jesus raised Lazarus, don't y'all remember the story? I know y'all remember the story. If you don't remember the story, just smile at me and nod your head. Amen, somebody. What are you saying, preacher? When uh, Mary and Martha sends a word to Jesus and he say, I'll be there in a minute. They're like, no, you got to come right now. The Bible said when he showed up, the sisters was upset. The same Mary and Martha that is going to anoint him. Why is that? Because their thing is, it's too late to do it the right way. Lazarus' soul has left his body. And because of his soul has left his body, you can't save him. Didn't I tell you to stop telling God what God can and cannot do? Didn't I tell you to stop telling God how to pack his thing? When Jesus showed up on the fourth day. Yeah, yeah. After they thought there was no way, yeah. Jesus uh, tells Lazarus, uh, Lazarus, get up and come on out of there. And the Bible says Lazarus came hopping out yeah. in his grave clothes. Uh, yeah. But because uh, God showed up in yeah. the form of his son yeah. and he told him, my sheep, uh, when they hear my voice, uh, they will respond. Yeah. Why? Because I'm the master and they're my servant. And when Lazarus Mary anoints his feet and he goes from there to Jerusalem. Some of the folks, the spectators that had gathered around the house, began to follow Jesus to Jerusalem because that's where the Passover was going to be. But more importantly, that's where he's going to be. Some of them were eyewitnesses that gathered around the grave site because they wanted to see, is it possible for a man to snatch a life back from death? The Bible says, Jesus proved to the people, I can do all things because of my dad. And when I told Lazarus to get up, he got up. Now, Jesus 
comes into Jerusalem and the people had heard this miraculous story. Yes. The people had began to meet individuals who had gathered around Lazarus' house. The people now began to communicate and talk with her. some of the people that was at the gravesite. They said, oh yeah, it's true. He did it. He's alive. And well, Lazarus is there. And so people wanted to see who is this man from Nazareth. Who is this miracle worker? Who is this prophet from God? Who is this rabbi? They wanted to know who is this extraordinary man. But I stopped by to tell somebody he's more than a man. He's more than a miracle worker. He's the son of God. Am I right about it? Say it. He comes, he comes. But you need to understand this triumphant moment recorded in the Bible. It's not just about the sign that he fulfills that proves to us he is the one sent by God. Yeah. You need to understand for you and I that God's going to show you through death he conquers death. Yeah. What do you mean, preacher? I'm saying everybody in here ought to be skipping on their way to church with a smile on their face because you know that when you die physically that God has made a way when you leave this earth physically God has prepared a place for you when you leave this earth physically you know that's not the end of the story God's got some waiting on me God's got a crown for me is there anybody here this morning that wants your crown of glory is there anybody here that your white robe. Is there anybody here that wants to assemble around the throne of God in heaven one day? If that's what you want in your life, say yeah. 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 The preacher said, the preacher, he, he, in the text, of, we see what John has told us that we have the spiritual obligation. We have this moral responsibility to do what? I'm glad you asked me that question. Y'all must have all got perfect scores in your SATs, ain't you? Huh? Y'all are some smart individuals. What are you saying, preacher? The Bible says, God, and this is one of the things about Palm Sunday, coming at the beginning of the Holy Week, that ought to challenge every believer every year. Why is that, preacher? I'm glad you asked me, because what you need to understand is that we have this spiritual obligation. We have this moral responsibility to do what? To share the word of God. To remind some folks that God got Jesus back up. We'll wait for next Sunday to talk about that. Amen, somebody. Amen. What are you saying, preaching? We've got to understand every one of us has a divine assignment. Every one of us, God has called into service. Every one of us, God has empowered with the ability to tell somebody about the goodness, the grace, and mercy of God. Am I right about it? Amen. Every one of us can tell somebody one day when I was lost, wilding in my sin, he stopped by, interrupted me on my way to hell, turned me around, and showed me a better way. Every one of us can tell the story how he walks with you how he talked with you and when you get yourself in trouble yes that's how it works amen somebody that's right. yeah. how he has your back that's right. yeah. every one of us can tell somebody how he's a healer yeah. how he's a comforter yeah. every one of us has an obligation to tell it like it is that somebody else might believe. Yeah. What are you saying, preacher? What are you saying, preacher? Have you ever wondered when you read in the Gospels as they write about whether it's not the Gospel or in the book of John, have you ever wondered what made people come to see Jesus? Now, I told you about the spectators from Lazarus' house. I told you about the eyewitnesses who stood by the graveside. But they weren't the only people in the crowd. Amen, somebody. What caused them to see G? 
Jesus. And here's the thing, here's the thing that always gets me in every year. I think that I've learned a little bit more about this uh, event. And every year, God shows me, you got some more to learn. Amen, somebody. And I like that about God. He never stops teaching me. Yeah. He never stops yeah. growing me. Right. He never stops speaking to me. Yeah. He never stops encouraging me. And so I can feel myself growing in his grace. I can feel myself getting closer to him. I can get to that place where I can say, Lord, I don't know everything, but if you keep teaching me, I'm willing to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. What are you saying, preacher? See, because of shocking about Jesus convince these people that here comes the Messiah. But the thing about it is they got the right name and the wrong definition. What are you saying, preacher? See, what they wanted was this. They thought that the Messiah that the prophets had been talking about was going to come and overthrow the Roman Empire. Yeah. They thought that uh, this major military mighty man was going to come and come get an army and this uh, him and his army was going to overthrow the Romans and when they overthrow the Romans it would put the children of Israel back in their proper place. Uh -huh. That's what they thought. And they was waiting on them. How do you know preacher? Because the Bible says, uh, they said, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Right. So they got the part about the title. They understood he was the Messiah. What they didn't understand, right. he had his own agenda and wasn't reading their plan. Right. Now that's a problem. Y'all yeah. know that's a problem in church today. Yeah. Yeah. God getting in the way of their plans. <laughs> And when God gets in the way of their plans, we got a problem because this is our plan. But the people, the Bible says this, uh, that when uh, they began to shout Hosanna, Hosanna, and here's how fickle some folks can be. On Sunday, the Bible tells us they took off their coats, laid them down on the ground before Jesus. The Bible tells us in the Gospel of John, they laid down palms in front of them. And they, they, that was on a Sunday. John makes it clear six days before the Passover. He had been at the house and worked his way to Jerusalem. So we clear. Amen, somebody. But by Friday afternoon, Lord Jesus, the same one that was saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us now, was saying, crucify him. He ain't the person we thought he was. He didn't come to do what we wanted him to do. He didn't come the way we wanted him to come. We don't need him no more going out. Mm. Right? Yes. We're saying preacher. Yes. He came to save our souls. Yes. This thing is, and who cares about that? I need somebody that's going to change my current condition. I need somebody that's going to get me out of all this debt I got hanging around my neck. I need somebody that's going to get me out of this dead end job that I'm sick and tired of. I need somebody that's going to make my supervisor behave. I need somebody that's going to make my spouse do what I want her to do the way I want to do it. When I say do it, y'all know that ain't going to happen. Ain't that somebody? I need somebody that's going to fix my problems right now. Amen, somebody. But the problem is, God said, I got something bigger. I got something better in store for you. You're thinking too small. You're thinking about right now. I'm thinking about eternity. Does that make sense this morning? What are you saying, preacher? See, because uh, it's only in the Gospel of John. Put it together, people. Put it together, people. Only in the Gospel of John we get the seven signs that point to the divinity of Jesus Christ. It's no mistake why John chapter 12 is the one where we find out uh, it was on a Sunday. It's no mistake. It's not happen's chance. That in John we find out about the palm being laid on the ground. It's no mistake that John tells us that he comes and fulfills a prophecy 
that we cannot miss it. What do you say in preaching? John is the one that wants you and I to understand that the people may have gotten it wrong, but God written word is given to me and you that we can get it right. What are you saying, preacher? I need you to realize, I need you to realize that John teaches us Jesus is more than a right now God. He's a God for all times. Aren't you glad? 2,000 years after the cross, he's still saving people. Aren't you glad? 2,000 years after the resurrection, he's still helping people like me and you from day to day. Aren't you glad he's still saving souls? They wanted a right now Messiah, but God had an eternal son who was willing to do all that was necessary. John teaches us to tell it like it is. What do you mean, preacher? What do you mean, preacher? I need you to realize something. See, because in the crowd, just like we gather on Sunday mornings and just like we gather online, we come together. There were some in the crowd that were curiosity seekers. You know what I mean by curiosity seekers? They don't have a problem showing up on Sunday. They may come two, three Sundays every month, but they got a problem if they have to give their life to the Lord and make a commitment. They just want a surface kind of relationship. But I stopped by to tell somebody, you don't want to be a curiosity seeker. You don't want a superficial relationship with Jesus Christ. You want to be all in. You want an eternal relationship that promise you that one day your soul shall have an appointed place around Around God's throne, you want to know and have the blessed assurance that I'm heaven bound. Why? Not because of who I am, but because I'm connected to the Son of God. I'm connected to my Redeemer. I'm connected to my Savior. You want a relationship with the Almighty God. That's what you want. What do you mean, preaching? See, because of, in the crowd. They weren't just the, the spectators, the eyewitnesses, and the curiosity seekers. In the crowd, there's always going to be some naysayers, detractors. And in the Bible, John helps us see by the Pharisees, these religious leaders, they were still distractors. Have you ever thought about? Have you ever thought about? Have you ever thought about? It was the men of God. Hear me this morning. Have you ever thought about it? When you read the scripture, it was the men of God who claimed to be doing the will of God that put the Son of God to death. Yes. Have you ever thought about it? That the men of God claimed they were doing the will of God when they killed the Son of God. Why? Because it didn't match their plan. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying you can get some distractors in the crowd. And they don't have to be on church folk. They can be some people in the church too. What are you yeah. saying, preacher? Yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying. Yeah. Because sometimes folk get discouraged if you start rocking the boat and you challenge this thing. Yeah. Cool. But I stop by to tell somebody, yeah. Jesus is a way maker. Yeah. I want you to understand. If Jesus is rocking your boat, you need to rock with the boat. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Jesus is causing the waves to be uneasy. You need to ride with the waves. And Jesus is moving in a direction opposite of you. You need to turn around and follow Jesus wherever he should take it. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you, stop trying to tell God what to do. Get in line and line up with the one who can give you eternal life. The one who can You'll have a day when you'll be around the God's throne. Yeah. One that can promise you your sins have been forgiven and make it true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It ain't about where you want to go. Well, it's about where is he leading you? Yeah. Am I making sense this morning? Yeah. What are you saying, preacher? I need you to realize there was a whole lot of folk in the crowd that was intrigued by this miracle worker. There was a whole lot of folk 
who was intrigued about how can he raise Lazarus from the grave. There's a lot of folks who heard the stories and his reputation. But when it came right down to it, all they could do is see him through earthly eyes. And the problem with seeing Jesus through earthly eyes is you discount the divine providence, the divine presence of God operating in the moment because all you want to see is what you see in your head, which you see in your mind, which you see as the right thing. But sometimes God is doing things so big we can't understand and comprehend it all. But I stop by to tell somebody that's what faith is all about. Faith is about trusting God. Faith is about not being able to see it. Faith is about maybe not being able to understand it. But at the end of the day, just because you can't understand it, just because you can't see it, what you do know is this. God loves me. God will protect me. God won't set me up. God ain't going to harm me. And because I can trust God, I don't have to know what's going to happen tomorrow. I ain't got to know what's going to happen around the corner. As long as I'm following Jesus and wherever he takes me, I can trust him. I ain't got to know everything else. As long as I know he'll be in front of me, making a way for me. That's all I need to know. Is there anybody here this morning that trusts God enough to go where God leads you? Is there anybody here this morning? God done made you into a person who's an eyewitness. He done navigated you into and out of some situations. Is there anybody here this morning? God done navigate you through some sickness, through some death, through some setbacks. Is there anybody here? God done navigated you through some stuff you couldn't figure out. But at the end of the day, all you can say is, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I didn't know what I'm going to do. But Lord, I'm glad that you made a way. Lord, I didn't know where to turn. But I'm glad that you showed up. Lord, I'm glad that when you showed up, you stepped out and you told me the battle is not mine. It's yours. And when I stood still, I could see the glory of the Lord all around me. When I stood still and I let you have your way, I could tell God was in the midst. And now I can tell it like it is. He's my way maker. Am I right about it? See it. And now I can tell it like it is. He's my redeemer. Am I right about it? See it. And now I can tell it like it is. He is my comforter. Am I right about it? See it. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I'm glad. God. Some of y'all too young to know that. <laughs> what am I trying to get you to see? Don't put God in a box because it makes you comfortable. Come outside of your box and let God blow your mind. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. That's what Palm Sunday is supposed to remind Every believer, every year, stop putting God in a box. Come outside your box, your comfort zone, and let God blow your mind. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. O oh, wise and merciful God. Lord, we thank you that we're not restricted to being an eyewitness to Lazarus. 
Father, we thank you. We're not limited to be a spectator or a witness to what has happened. But more importantly, Father, you've given us a front row seat to where you're headed and what you're about to do. Father, we don't want to be curiosity seekers. We don't want to be distractors. We want to be disciples. And as a disciple, Father, we know that we may not know where you're leading us. We may not know what's around the corner. We may not even know what's going to happen tomorrow. But Father, we have the strength and the confidence of knowing we know you. And you love us. You protect us. You provide for us. You watch over us like nobody else can. So Father, we trust you. And because we trust you, we walk by faith. Not knowing every detail, but knowing the one thing that matters most. If we follow you, we can never lose. Because you are our way maker, our burden bearer, our redeemer, our savior, our comforter. You, Father, are our divine intercessor. So, Father, we thank you this day for reminding us that when it came time, when the rubber met the road, you was willing to walk to ride into Jerusalem, to walk to Calvary, carrying a cross, that we, Father, might have eternal life. You showed us, Father, do death, God conquered death, that we might have eternal life. Father, we thank you. Now give us the courage to tell the story. Tell the story to those who may not know that Jesus loves you, that Jesus wants to save you. That Jesus wants you to have an assigned spot around his father's throne. Father, give us the courage to tell somebody there's still room at the cross. There's still room. You're still saving people every moment of every day. So, Father, use us. Use us to do your will. Now, Father, if there's one under the sound of my voice, whether they be in the sanctuary or online, give them the courage, Father, to come out the aisle. And then, Father, to give me their hand. I'll pray with them. I'll pray for them. As you save them, Father, as they give their heart to you. If there's one online, Father, have them repeat after me. Jesus, come into my life. Save my soul. Forgive me of all my sins. And Father, if you save my soul, you forgive my sins, I'll serve you all the days of the life you shall grant unto me. Yes. Father, this very day I vow to worship you, to love you, to follow you in obedience, yes. to do the things that glorify your name. I believe if you prayed that simple prayer, God has saved you. Yes. If God has saved you, my only request is that you make a sacrifice of time to come and join us in the sanctuary next Sunday on Resurrection Sunday. Yes. And declare, I was online, I was online this very day. And Jesus came into my heart. He saved my soul. And I just came to let everybody know. To testify to bear witness. He's still in the saving business. He's still extending the invitation, the gift of salvation to lost souls. Father, we ask this in all things. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say amen. 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 Somebody give God a hand to the praise. Somebody give God a hand to the praise. have done as the Lord has commanded and yet there is room at the cross. Amen. Amen. I pray that this Lenten season as it comes to the final days of this holy week for all of us that we take the time to reflect on the goodness 
the grace and mercy of God. Why? Because I pray that each and every one of us has grown just a little bit more during this Lenten season. Amen? Amen? Because we all chose to do something to bring us closer to Christ. Amen? Amen. It's not magic. It's our faith that makes it work. Amen? Amen. So, I think they tell me we got to bless the palm. Let us pray, O oh, wise and merciful God. Lord, we know there's no magic in the palm. But there's mercy at the cross. Yes. Father, we know that it is you working in the lives of your people that will make the difference. But Father, we ask you bless these symbols, these symbols of faith that reminds us of Jesus' willingness to ride into Jerusalem, knowing that everybody else came for the celebration. He came for the cross. Because he knew, Father, we needed something we could get from no one else but him. Only his blood could purchase our redemption. Only his blood was strong enough to satisfy the wrath of God. So, Father, every time we look upon these palms, we pray, Lord, that we would come to understand it's not about the palm themselves, but they are symbols of your presence in our lives and the sacrifice you was willing to make. Then, Father, let us share with other people as we tell them the story behind the palm. We ask this in all things in the Master's name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say amen. 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 Somebody give God a hand of praise this afternoon. Amen. 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 Are y'all still excited from last week? Y'all still excited from last week? Last week was a glorious Sunday. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm only going to ask you one favor. Let it be as full next week as it was last week. Amen? Now, everybody looking at these shoes. I got to say something bad. All I'm saying is invite some folks to come. Amen? Amen. 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 As we prepare for our benediction, I want to remind everybody, please, uh, this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we're going to cover chapter number 7 in our book. Um, if you need, I believe there's still some study guides outside in the, in the North X. If you, don't, if you don't see one and you need one, just come see me. I still have a couple copies, right? But I want us to know, please read 7. And I'm thankful for everyone who's been participating in our Linton Bible Study series. I'm praying you've been getting as much out of it as I have. Amen? Let us stand for the benediction. And let us look to the Lord. All wise and merciful God. Lord, we thank you for being our God. As we depart this place, but never ever your presence. We ask you, Father, rest, rule, and abide in us. And allow us to abide in thee. That the things that we do will glorify your name. It will advance your kingdom. It will bless your people. As we lay down in slumber tonight, Father, revive our bodies and grant us another day of life and raise us up tomorrow and give us another opportunity to tell it like it is that you are our Savior, our Redeemer, and our Waymaker. We ask this in all things in the matchless name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say amen. 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 amen, amen. Go in peace and may the peace of God be with you. Please come forward to receive your palms. Don't forget to give your tithes and offering to the trustees as you exit the sanctuary after you receive your palms. Amen. Amen.